Hi, I'm Ashton. Hi, I'm Lau. Hi, I'm Brandon. Hi, I'm Liu. Hi, I'm Dylan. Hi, I'm Kenny. And we are Team USB. Uh, uh, uh. In 1884, Thomas Edison, while working on his incandescent light, inserted a metal plate between the glowing filaments. He observed that the electricity would flow from the positive side of the filament to the plate but not from the negative. Unwittingly, he had created the first diode. John Ambrose Freeman of England, one of the Edison former assistants, realized that the diode had the ability to convert alternating current into direct current. Then he incorporated it into his very efficient radio wave detector. In 1943, the Army accepted the proposal to build a general purpose computer using vacuum tube, INEC, to calculate the ballistic firing tables in World War II. INEC is created by John Mapley, a professor of electrical engineering, and John Eckert, one of his graduate students. The INEC was completed in 1946. It is too late to be used in the war effort, but it continued to operate under the BIL management until the 1955, when it was disassembled. Hello guys! Now I will talk about the component of INEC. INEC consists of many components and they are 17,468 vacuum tube, 17,000 of resistor, 10,000 of capacitor, 7,200 of crystal diodes, 1,500 of relax, 6,000 of manual switches, and lastly, 5 million of shoulder joints. The combination of all these components will create our first generation of computer which is called INEX. The weight of INEX is about 30 tons, which is much more heavier than, than our nowadays computers. It's covered at 1,800 square feet, which is 2.4 meter times 0.9 meter and times 30 meters. It consists consist of a lot of electricity, which is about 150 of kilowatt to operate it. And lastly, an IBM card reader and card punch were used for were used for input and output. Do you all know the function of INET? Don't know right? Let's, let's proceed to the functions. Okay now, so let's, let us assume that this one is IBM punch card reader. Then this one is plus, but a lot of them call pluses. And then this one is accumulator. And this machine consists of 20 accumulators, which means that it can hold up to 20 digits. Accumulators is stuck for 0 until 9. So now, let's assume that this one is data, consists of 3, then 3 inside. Then when I insert the card, then the puzzles will input the accumulators, then it will become 3 then. 3. Then, while my second data is means plus 2, then I insert again, then the puzzle will increase also, increase by 2. Then, the result will be cut out from the IBM punch card machine, then which is 5. Then, let's say, is this is overflow, so the puzzle is more than 10, more than 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So since that the plaza is already overflow, then this is the 11 one. Then this one will be input for the second accumulator. Then the first accumulator data will be clear. 
then she, this means that this one is considered of 11 then the output will also output from the IBM punch card machine so now we are going to, going to consider the negative which is means the minus so let's say this one is 3 then I insert 3 here the data of 3 then the puzzle will increase 3 as usual increase 3 then while my second IBM card the data is considered negative negative 2 then when I insert a card the puzzle will automatically decrease 2 which means the data is only 1 then the, the data will also output through the IBM card machine then the result will be 1 Okay guys, see here, all these little guys here, well, this guy is called electron and they are negatively particle and this negatively particle is easily attracted to positive area. So, this little guy will come from one end to the other end, which is the anode. So, as the anode is being heated, the electron will start to move. It will move very fast from this area and it goes to the, the next. Are you ready anode? Yes, I'm ready! Ready? Go! Woo wow, you captured a lot! So as you can see that I not have all my electrons right now. Hey. In this area, the cathode area will be positively charged. So, it will attract back all the electrons from the anode. So as you can see, when the electrons are coming back to cathode here, over that side, the plate there is positive, so it, it will attract the electrons again. So as more and more it goes like that, both of the electrons will cause a collision. And the faster the speed, the more it collides. And the more it collides, it will cause uh, amplifier of the electronics. Well, the purpose of the grid here is to uh, to prolong the vacuum tube. If without the grid here, this vacuum tube will be easily uh, blown up and also will be easily heat up. So they have to exchange the vacuum tube many many times. So that's the purpose why they need a grid. Okay, let's look at the picture. This picture will show you the visual of the vacuum tube, and in this picture consists of three things which is the light bulb represent as cathode, vernation blind represent as the grid, plate represent as anode. So let's look at light bulb and plate. When the light bulb shines its light, it will hit on the plate fully and also when we put the vernation blind, it acts like a curtain. So when we put our curtain in a closed position, the light bulb emits its light only a partial light able to go through the Venetian blind and hit on the plate. However, when we put the Venetian blind, which means the curtain in an open position, the light bulb emits its light and it will hit the plate fully. And finally, we come to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Do remember, we are Team QS!